Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. So as you can see, I am showing you around my top makeup drawer today, which has some primers, foundation, concealer and powder. I'm just going to run through everything in this drawer so you can get a really good idea of what I own. So if we go by makeup order, it's primer first. And I have two primers here. I'm not a massive primer girl. I've only recently gotten into it. So first of all, I have MAC Skin Base Visage. This was quite an impulse buy of mine. I didn't really know what it was, what it did. It sort of just smooths your face a little bit before makeup. I don't know if it helps with longevity at all. It just feels nice on your face, to be honest. And next, I have the e.l.f. Paulus Puffy Primer, which I have been using in a lot of videos, if you are aware. Getting through it quite a lot. When I'm done with this, I might consider purchasing some of the different formulas, as I'm really interested by them. But I need to finish that up. As you can see, we don't have much space. I could stack two of them though. So foundations, I'm gonna just work my way along. These aren't really in a particular order or sorted in a way. So first of all, we have the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Tinted Moisturizer. I've actually been getting into this a lot recently. So it's a really good shade for me. When I originally bought it, it was too light. So it's in light 5N. Really smooth, really natural looking, just makes you look fresh. Next we have Maybelline Super Stay 24 Hour Full Coverage Foundation. Now this is a really good full coverage foundation from the drugstore or Boots or whatever you call it. It is really smooth on your face, but it does pack a punch. I do like to reach for this if I do want a more full coverage face. Next on the full coverage line is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. Recently did a comparison of this with Sheer Glow. So if you are interested, do check that out. But yep, it is full coverage, quite heavy looking. This is a great foundation if you want a blank canvas to work on, definitely. Okay, so here I have two NARS Sheer Glows. As you can see, they're in two different undertones. This is in Yukon and this is Gobi. I am definitely Gobi. This was recommended to me by someone at Sephora when I was there in New York and trying this foundation for the first time. Definitely not my shade. I really wish I just tried them out myself and decided, but since then I have realized I am Gobi. But it helped me know that I love the formula of this foundation so much. It is literally one of my favorite foundations ever. So yeah, NARS Sheer Glow. And I'm very keen to get the new NARS Light Reflecting Foundation that is coming out, I think February 1st in the UK. And I will want to do a review of that. Probably compare it to Sheer Glow as they do seem quite similar. Okay, so next we have Estee Lauder Double Wear. This is quite a classic foundation. I do really enjoy it. It looks really smooth and it has really good coverage. But my one problem is it does have flashback. So in the situations where I'd wear it, like going out and stuff, I kind of shy away from it in case there's any photos. Otherwise, I look like Flashback Mary. Anywhere I'm going that is nice but isn't taking photos. So one of the newer additions to my collection is the L'Oreal True Match Nude Plumping Tinting Serum. I'm really enjoying this so far. I think it looks so smooth and healthy and I do just keep reaching for it. I'm excited for when the months warm up because it is that tiny, tiny bit too dark for me to wear it then even more. Sort of same goes for this foundation. So this is the Colourpop Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. This is also a tad too dark for me at the moment. It's higher coverage than the L'Oreal one, but it is so smooth and healthy looking. I'm so excited to wear this again. So yeah, so that's in 60N. So when I was wearing five over there. So we have the NYX Bear With Me Tinted Skin Valve. This is actually one of my favorite sort of lighter coverage tinted moisturizer style foundations i feel like it's discontinued which really breaks my heart because i love it so much i'm gonna have a look online see if there's anywhere i can get it still i don't get why they discontinued it because they're still releasing stuff from the bear with me line really great product if you can manage to get your hands on it so we have the wet and wild photo focus foundation very influenced by tarty i do enjoy this foundation i use it a lot when i was a bit younger just doesn't quite have the quality quality I want and it does have this like weird paint smell. I might give it another go soon because I haven't tried it in a while and I've sort of forgotten what it actually looks like on my skin. This one is leaning towards being decluttered if I try it one more time and I don't enjoy it. And then I'll roll something else new in. I'm very much in a full space in this drawer so I can only buy new products when I let ones go because otherwise it won't fit. Next we have arguably one of my favourite favourite cheaper foundations. It's the L'Oreal Infallible 24 hour fresh wear foundation this is amazing this is almost comparable in quality to nars sheer go and just how it wears and looks different sort of finishes and coverage but the quality is comparable this is amazing l'oreal know how to do their base products this is another one of my summer foundations which i so so want to use again i might have to just get a paler shade because i love this foundation so much so it's the Too faced born this way foundation 
This just makes me look flawless. I think this is what the NARS Natural Radiant was trying to be because this just makes my skin look so smooth. It covers any single bit of scarring. It just looks amazing, but it is a very dark shade for me. And when I am tanned in summer, I am this shade. I did have a lighter one, but then I bought this in summer so I could wear it. I might have to go back to vanilla because this is warm nude. So another foundation that I really like that I don't think a lot of people actually talk about is the Urban Decay Stay Naked Weightless Foundation. This is really stunning and it looks really smooth on my face and it's just another one that wears really well and it does look light skin and it is weightless. That is a great foundation if you are a lover of Urban Decay. And I also, because I loved that one so much, I decided to try the Hydromaniac version of it. I do think I still prefer the Stay Naked, but this does have its place. I use this more like a tinted serum. So I apply with a very light hand as if I do too much, it can cake up around the bottom of my face. These might be something I have to declutter from. So we have the Rimmel Last and Finish 25 Hour Foundation with Comfort Serum. Might end up getting rid of these two and keeping the newer looking bottle to make some space for the new NARS foundation and possibly a new Too Faced one as well with how I'm speaking. This is a really good full coverage foundation, especially if you have acne. There's something about this that just smooths over the texture of acne. It must be this Comfort Serum thing and it just wears really well over it. I do really love this foundation and when I had really problem skin when I was younger, hence why I have the two really old ones. Oh actually I just realised, so this is in 200 and this is in 100. So I might just get rid of the lowest 100 one. Great for problem skin. Finally on the foundation front is the EX1 Invisiwear Liquid Foundation. I'm not sure how I feel about this, it's very mousse-like, it is really strange. A lot of people do love this, I might just play around with it a little bit more so I get a fairer view of it, but I'm not fussed by it in any way. I just bought it because I could see it everywhere online and it wasn't too expensive. Concealer time. Here's two of my favourite concealers. It is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. Stunning, stunning, stunning. I use it in my videos so much. It looks so smooth, high coverage. Yes, everything I want in a concealer. I have it in two shades. One that's a little bit lighter for around my eyes and one for acne. I recently did a video on these two concealers so we got the elf 16 hour camo and the elf hydrating camo quick spoiler I like the hydrating camo one more it just has that nicer skin like finish than the 16 hour camo i think they both might have their place if you do want that little bit more of a matte finish or maybe a really oily skin but for me the hydrating one just wins as i love the pretty fresh line so much as you can tell i also have the colourpop pretty fresh concealer this looks really lovely around the eyes especially when paired with the tinted moisturizer as it is just that lighter coverage it just has you looking fresh it is lovely another nars concealer so this is nars radiant creamy concealer it is in a little bit of a dark shade for me at the moment i was using this on spots in some Summer, so I can't really wear it at the moment but I don't really have spots at the moment so that is fine but I will pull this out when it is summer and I am wearing foundation sort of this shade it will complement really well I'm disappointed by these concealers these are the L'Oreal infallible morning concealer I thought I'd love it as I love the infallible foundation but here we are I don't like it it just looks cakey and heavy and I can't figure out a way to get it to work these are heading towards the declutter bin if they don't work for me anytime soon some of the best inexpensive concealers is the collection last and perfection concealer so smooth great coverage i really enjoy these a lot kind of give me radiant creamy vibes actually as well and last but not least classic is the maybelline instant anti-age eraser concealer this does just look so smooth around your eyes and on your face if you use it on spots as well there's something about the hydrating formula it just smooths over any acne really nicely i haven't used it in a while it is a favorite of mine and i did recommend it to my mum when she was buying some makeup okay last but not least a powder they are sort of around the back let me grab this one first so this is the rimmel stay matte the lid is so broken this is great mattifying powder if you have any excess shine you just need to tone down it's great for that it looks smooth it doesn't add any color or coverage and i don't know how much it actually helps with longevity but if you have any shine this will tone it down okay so mac studio fix I love this stuff and I've been using it with just concealer at the moment and it looks amazing and it is great for a really quick face. I use it with sort of a dense brush like this one and it adds that little bit of coverage and colour but it also sets down your face and it has a really smooth finish. I really enjoy this. Okay, so here we have Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. So this is my one that is 
very much done. I'm really eking this out. I want to use up the whole thing. As we all know, it is very expensive. And here's the new one that I bought, which I will open when I have finished this one. I'm really exercising my restraint on that. And here we have the e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. It's a loose setting powder. It is so smooth looking and it does give you that really subtle glow. There's no sort of shimmer pigments in it or anything. It just makes you look healthy without looking matte. It does set down your concealer or foundation really well so they're not like tacky to the touch or anything. It just looks really smooth around your eyes as well. I love this as an around the eye powder. And last but not least, we have my Too Faced Born This Way setting powder. This is so almost done. I have had this for coming up to two years probably and it has done me well. It is so good for pressing into concealer to make it sure it doesn't crease all over face powder. This is my Ride or Die loose face powder. Whereas the Charlotte Tilbury for me is definitely more a finishing powder. I will use it lightly with a small brush in select areas when I want to keep my face looking not powdered. Whereas this is when I want to whip out the big guns. And that is the top drawer of my makeup collection. I hope you enjoyed. I'm thinking of doing some more videos of this on blush, bronzer, maybe some eyes, see how I feel, see how you guys like this. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe for future videos. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye!